down in the hardware stuff. Peter Croft's going to talk to us about Arduino. Uh, so this is uh, using Python to control an Arduino system and what I do with this to be able to um, build robotic systems and control fire effects. Um, so I'm going to make a base assumption that um, uh, people need a basic introduction to an Arduino. Uh, this is your basic Arduino board. Um, this is an Arduino Uno. Um, they cost about $30. Um, it's a um, hardware and software embedded system that is remarkably easy to use. In the old days, when you would try to set up an embedded system to do work, you had to pay a lot of money in the order of several thousand dollars for a board. Um, you had to build a cross-platform um, cross compiler so that your code would be able to be built in and run on your embedded system. The folks that created the Arduino, <coughs> excuse me, they uh, um, approached it from the point of view of open source. So the hardware specification is open source. The software specifications are open source. They provide uh, um, an IDE that has the ability to generate the cross-platform code that's required to run on the various different Arduinos that are available. It makes it remarkably simple for somebody who has absolutely no experience developing embedded systems to get going with it. Um, It'd be wonderful if we could actually run Python and Arduino. Um, unfortunately, there are some real physical hardware limitations that prevent that from happening. Um, it's an 8-bit microcontroller. Um, the, they typically have on the order of 32K of memory, um, 8K of stack space, and about 1K of non-volatile RAM to store data between um, power off of the, uh, of the system. Um, it has multiple digital and analog I.O. pins, and they are what you use to control external systems. Connecting onto one of the I.O. pins, you can create, uh, you can control a, a servo motor that would move uh, an object in one location to another. You can turn on and off relays. You can turn on and off lights. Um, they have this wonderful hardware specification that they create shields to add additional capabilities to the basic hardware that comes with an Arduino. So this one here is a shield that allows it to use Ethernet to be able to um, talk on a regular network as any other computer. Um, you can get shields to control um, uh, audio, you get shields for, um, I'm drawing a blank, motor controls and various other things. And they all um, remarkably follow the same hardware specification. One plugs on top of the other, it's a piggyback system, and now this Arduino, if we would use it and write code for it, would be talking on Ethernet. Very flexible system. The Arduinos come in uh, multiple sizes. Um, they range from uh, the really small ones that you can use, they're about one inch square, to uh, um, larger systems that have multiple uh, many more I.O. pins, like the Arduino Mega has uh, 54 digital I.O. pins, so you could have 54 different um, lights or servos or, or motor controls happening at the same time. Um, the shields went too fast. Um, the Arduino software, um, you go to arduino.cc, you download their IDE, you start writing code in C, uh, the programs are called sketches. They have an extension of .ino. Um, the IDE takes your C code, wraps it up, pushes it out to your, uh, your microcontroller, and when you power on your microcontroller, the code just starts running. So some very basic. Here is the most simple uh, Arduino code that you can find. It does nothing but it shows two functions, the ones that are important. Setup is the code that's called the first time the system boots up. Loop is called continuously one time after another. So your main logic code lives inside the loop function. Uh, let's see here. A very simple application that would read from a serial port and just echo the, the bytes received back is up here. 
Um, starts by setting up the serial port to run at 57,600 um, bits per second. It's the baud rate. Um, it reads, so long as there's a, a byte available, it reads it, translates it into the decimal value, and just, uh, writes it back out to the serial port. It's extremely simple. Um, anybody can use this. So to control um, Arduino systems, or to control systems externally with Arduino, um, I use a very simple serial protocol. It has a single byte um, header value of 255, what command is to be run, and then any parameters that are needed for the command. If anybody's been around long enough where they were actually writing code on a real RS-232 port way back when, one of the things that you would find is that they're um, semi-reliable. Every once in a while, uh, you'll get corruption in the line, you'll get bits that are dropped, and information won't be transmitted. The idea for the, that header byte is that so long as I get one of those, I know that the next sequence coming in is valid, that I haven't lost anything. So if I would not receive one of those to begin with, my code would just ignore anything that came in over the serial port. So you look at this hardware, and you don't actually see a serial port on here. But what you have is a USB port that has a driver that emulates the RS-232 logic. So on your Linux systems, this would appear to be a um, slash dev slash TTY device. <clears throat> uh, some more code here. Lost my cursor. So um, the basic code shows um, um, for Python. I don't want the Python code right now. Hold on a second, please. So this is um, code that runs on the Arduino that provides um, a serial interface for commands to come across and to activate servos, LEDs, and turn it on, on and off relays. It's, it's basic C code. Um, uh, much of the logic that is in here, I stole from other applications that exist for Arduino. Um, one of the wonderful things um, that Arduino has, like Python, is a very, very large, robust community. It shares code for everything. The tutorials that are on the Arduino website give you a lot of basic starting point information about um, how to use it, what it does, um, and then you take the code and you use it for what you need. So in this code here, we, uh, um, let's go down to the reading of my commands, right? So I start with uh, checking to see if I have um, uh, a command structure ready to be received. If so, I read it, um, verify that I have a header byte, um, jump out based on what type of command, um, it is if the command is to blink, to run a servo, to turn on and off one of the particular pins on the device. It's pretty straightforward. On the Python side, um, you need to use PySerial, which gives you access to serial ports from, uh, from within Python. Um, the code will... Uh, um, Send, uh, as soon as I can find it. Is that readable in the back? Nobody's in the back. Um, so the code basically has this set of uh, write commands. Um, writes the header byte, writes the command pins over the serial board. It's, this is extremely, um, extremely simple core idea on, on communicating. The Arduino is connected to a host computer via a serial port. Your uh, application runs on your Arduino, which is expecting commands over the serial port. Your application program running on the host sends the commands, and then you can do things with it. Turn on and off the pins um, and whatnot. So you may... Uh, 
wonder what you would do with this. And here's a couple of videos of systems that I've built or examples of systems that I've built using it. So this is um, a small robotic system that has two eyes and a Microsoft Connect. The Connect is providing location information for where the closest point of anything that's in front of it is located. It gets translated in Python, which then tells the servo motors to focus the eyes on any particular point. You guys catch that? Um, the next system that I do, I'm a, I'm a bit of a uh, um, uh, pyromaniac, and I used an Arduino and code to be able to control fire effects like this. Um, and then there's uh, another example of a larger installation. So this is a uh, Python controlling a fire control system. <laughs> Um, now, you may, um, you, you may wonder if I didn't uh, get too low in the code and worry about writing my own protocol to send commands back and forth. And it turns out I did because I didn't actually do any research ahead of time. There are two organizations out there, uh, Fermata and Modbus, that provide libraries that run on the Arduino with industry, whatever that may mean, standard communication protocols to control uh, embedded systems. So instead of writing my own C code on the Arduino, I could have grabbed uh, the Fermata um, uh, package, installed it on my, on my Arduino, and written code to do that. But um, I like to start from the beginning sometimes, so I wrote my own protocol. You're gonna run into troubles with this system. Um, uh, the USB bus is going to reset. Uh, it happens regularly. Um, somebody or something will uh, cause the USB connection to be able to uh, uh, just come slightly loose in the socket. And that's going to result in a reset of the bus. So you're going to have to catch that in your code base and then reconnect to your serial port from your Python code to allow your system to continue. Um, because you're dealing with an embedded system with limited amounts of memory on the Arduino, if you start um, having fairly elaborate code that runs on the Arduino, you're going to get to a point where your SRAM gets exceeded. The SRAM is where the runtime stack information is stored for the system that's running. Um, on the Uno, it's uh, 8K, um, uh, excuse me, 1K, um, and when that gets exceeded, unpredictable things happen. Usually what you'll see is that the Arduino will reset. So there are ways to get around that. You can take your, uh, your static um, variables that are in your code, and you can push them out into code space, which has 32K available to it, and then transfer that when you need it into uh, running memory to be able to avoid running out of, of memory. Um, the other problem, if you've never dealt with, uh, <coughs> excuse me, if you've never dealt with electrical systems or electronics much, um, you cannot push a lot of power through these. They're very, very limited in what they can, uh, can support. Um, if you try running one servo motor, it'll probably work. Two servo motors might start having problems. Three servo motors, the system will reset regularly. So you have to have an external power source to power the higher load systems that are going to be controlled by the Arduino. Um, I'm running way too fast. Sorry about that. Um, I'm going to have an open space tonight. I'll have a bunch of Arduinos, some relays, LEDs, uh, play with it, see if we can set things up um, if anybody's interested. Um, Spark Fun has uh, donated some ProtoSnap mini Arduino boards, and I'll be giving those away tonight to anybody that comes to the open space. Uh, it's going to be 9 o'clock. Uh, the code for the presentation is... Um, uh, on GitHub, under my account, um, arduino.cc is where you learn more about the Arduino system itself, um, Fermata, and then uh, PySerial, which you'll need to be able to run, uh, uh, communicate to the serial port over Python. Do we have questions?
Yeah, actually, I have a question. Um, so, in terms of environments uh, where you actually have your board set up, uh, let's say you had it on something like, uh, I don't know, a motorcycle or something that was vibrating. Mm -hmm. So, how well does an Arduino board work in non uh, environments? I actually, in 2004, built a system um, that had an embedded com computer. It was not an Arduino, but an embedded system on a motorcycle to track GPS and video information. Right. And it worked um, uh, remarkably well with the exception of every single connection I had to tape over. So, any power wow, connection, yeah. any uh, USB connection, any of those, use a little uh, gaffer's tape on it or get a, a secure locking connection for it and you probably won't have problems. Okay, but the board will be fine though. Pardon? The board will be fine though, the Arduino board. And yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Uh, you went through some of the troubles you run with the limitations of the, um, the Amtel chips and the, the RAM. Do you think that now that the ARM chips are getting cheaper and now you have Raspberry Pi or Bagelbone where you can have a full ARM system with Linux and you can even have embed your, your Python on, on the board. So Do you think Arduino is going to keep thriving the way it's... it's so, so the Arduinos have um, uh, a fairly uh, strong uh, marketing presence. There's a lot of people that know what Arduino boards are. There's a lot of people that work with them on a regular basis and have um, shields for them, the hardware portion. Um, It'll be interesting to see if the BeagleBone boards start collecting shields at the same rate, in which case one of those can overcome it. But I'm, I'm, uh, I just ordered a Beagle board and I've ordered a, a Raspberry Pi because I'm very interested to be able to get um, Python running natively on the embedded system to be able to control directly without having to have a host computer like this. Yeah, I, I used to do a lot of stuff on the Arduino and I got a BeagleBone and since I can't run Python on it, I'm hooked. And it right. has the Ethernet um, port on it already, so you don't have to buy an extra shield like with the Arduino. So I was just um, right. wanting to know if you thought the Arduino. Uh, now that ARM is making it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what happens. That's that's about all I can say right now. I've never dealt with this sort of hardware before, so forgive um, me. Could you speak into the microphone, please? Sorry. I've never dealt with this sort of hardware before, so forgive me if this is a silly question. But why are external modules called shields? To me, that implies that it's you know something putting between something else rather than connecting. So it's just the terminology that the folks that created the Arduino came up with. Okay. Um, they're merely start standardized on calling anything that they plug into an Arduino a shield. Okay. It has no reference to anything else. Okay then. Hi, I've been watching the uh, Arduino space for quite a while, but haven't actually Could done Could you uh, speak into the microphone, Sorry. please? I've been watching the Arduino, Arduino space for a long time, but haven't actually done anything. Mm -hmm. Can you walk us through what debugging a typical uh, session like that would look like? Um, so I'm not set up to walk through debugging because I can't plug the Arduino in, right, but, but I can mean, walk through just it verbally. Just at a high level, yeah. So um, uh, it's very similar to using printf, uh, print statements in Python to debug. You'll uh, um, set up your code to have um, print statements over the serial port. Um, the development environment has built into it a serial terminal. Um, you activate it and then you can uh, receive information back from your uh, host computer um, uh, of what state things are running in. And then the, the compile, um, uh, compile load run cycle is fairly robust. So it makes for a reasonable way to, to do debugging on it. Um, one of the downsides is that if you forget to take your print statements out afterwards, internally, uh, when you run an Arduino that is no longer plugged into a host computer or doesn't have a serial port listening, the internal buffer will fill up and the Arduino will come to a halt. <laughs> Thank you. You're about. Uh, so actually to uh, extend on that a little bit, um, I noticed there were some blocking reads in your example from the serial port. I yes. wonder if there are any facilities for event-driven programming. Um, so I actually just started working with Fermata to be able to implement uh, the protocol in Twisted so that I can get past this because right now, um, <laughs> Right now, it's, it's rather cumbersome if something goes sideways um, because it's blocking IOs. You may not always uh, catch the problem. Um, I just wanted to um, discourage anybody from using Modbus if you have a choice. I wrote a Modbus driver at my last job in Cython, and it sucks. Um, <laughs> so, t 
to, to expound upon that a little bit, Modbus came out in the early 70s, possibly the late 60s. It's pretty old. The issue it's is it only has one type 16-bit unsigned integers, so everybody yeah. that uses it ends up layering some kind of application layer protocol on top of that and with all non-standard type conversions and stuff. One uh, technique I've used in the past for my embedded projects is implementing a very simple command line interpreter uh, so that I can interact with my embedded device in a serial terminal. You can have you know, short little two-letter commands that don't take up a lot of RAM. And it, it does take up a little bit of RAM to store and process those strings, but uh, you can use program memory, like you said, right. for that, uh, since it's AVR-based. Um, oh, one other advantage, though, to Arduino versus a BeagleBone or a Raspberry Pi is power consumption. Uh, Arduino right. seems about a tenth of the power, uh, and that's at maximum load. Uh, if you put it into one of its sleep modes, uh, it can run on a battery for months or years. So another, another advantage of the Arduino is that, um, now that you bring that up, is that it's a, it's a whole uh, platform as opposed to just one implementation. Uh, this happens to be one style. There's the Mega. There's the um, Professional, which is about an inch square. There's uh, a system that was produced by uh, Adafruit recently that's designed specifically for wearable computing. So you have this little uh, circular board um, that gets sewn into to clothing, and then you wire the clothing up um, to provide lights, to, to monitor uh, GPS, or whatever else you want to do with it. So it, it's, the ecosystem around it is, is fairly robust. Can we go over here? Uh, any options for emulators or anything to do? I'm not aware of any working? emulators. Okay. Have you had any problems with uh, ESD? With? Electrostatic discharge issues? With I have hardware? not. Um, I found I was, when I first started using these, I was extremely concerned about it. Um, but over time, you know, I've picked them up, touched them, hold them, and they seem to be very, very robust. Now, I haven't actually introduced um, them into any sort of a high voltage environment, um, so that may um, cause problems, but no, I'm quite happy with how robust they are. One other question Have you used the AT Tiny for anything? Any I have projects? not. All right, thanks. Just curious about what onboard peripherals. I know you talked about different shields, but um, do they have A to Ds, D to Ds, um, interrupts? What kind of support do they have on in the architecture? Um, so the shields are basically extensions to the the I/O pins that are available. Um, a particular shield that may provide, uh, let's say, the uh, the Ethernet shield uh, will use um, two or three of the existing pins to um, emulate uh, the. Um, the Ethernet port is an Ethernet driver chip on the board that communicates with the Arduino over those pins. And then the hardware, or excuse me, the, uh, the library for the Ethernet controller that runs on the Arduino communicates over those pins to talk to the, the, um, the Ethernet chip and then outside. So there's, uh, all the shields are doing is providing a layer on top of the existing uh, exposed pins to do I.O. operations. Right, I was thinking more on board the actual microcontroller though, like as a microcontroller it would have some built-in peripherals. What kind of peripherals would come on the uh, processor itself? So you have the digital I.O., you have the analog I.O., you have uh, two interrupt driven, um, uh, two on the nano and four on the megas to be able to have switches that, in, that uh, trip a hardware interrupt. Um, that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. On the lighter side of things, are you going to demo some of your pyrotechnics tonight? Um, <laughs> I, actually, I actually looked at getting a, a permit from the Santa Clara County Fire Marshal, and it's about 600 bucks. Um, if people would like to pass a hat, I will make arrangements for next year, but this year I can't show any fire effects, sorry. So just to be clear, the, uh, the role of Python on this is just talking over the serial port that's to, correct. to the code that's run, written in C that's running. So the, the systems that I, that I work with, because um, I find it substantially easier to write in Python than in C, um, the code that runs on the Arduino is extremely simple. Okay. It's a set of commands that do something when um, they're given something over the serial port. But then the logic happens out on the Python code. So in the case of the robot with the eyes tracking, the Python code is pulling data, um, two data sets off the, uh, the Microsoft Connect, determining the location of the closest item to it, um, finding a regular, relative point in space from its location, sending the, doing some calculations and sending the uh, commands to the servo motors to move the eyes to the particular location that they need to focus on. 
It's a whole lot easier to do that in, in Python than it is in, in C. Thank you. Are you aware of the Python on a Chip project, which will run on uh, the Adreno Omega? Um, I am aware. Uh, the last time I looked at it, it was extremely limited in what it could do. Yes, it's a very tiny VM, obviously. Um, I'm, I'm much more interested in uh, uh, the Raspberry Pi and the, uh, the BeagleBones because they are actual, they run Linux. Right, yeah, you can run on full Python. I just know if people really want Python on a small thing, it's one it would go. It would be nice, but the, the memory limitations, I don't think it's realistic. Yeah, I, it's only for very small things, but it's much slower. But if you need fast prototyping, it's coming yeah. handy. Okay, so we've got time for about one more question. In systems where we have sensors and also, do you think Formata is better or native C code, like in real-time applications, where you need a lot of reading from your sensors? Mm -hmm. So you can, you can very easily hook up analog sensors. Uh, uh, there's uh, somebody who created a, a weather station that is able to read the amount of rain that came out by reading the, uh, the movement of um, a potentiometer based on a, a float level um, through one of the analog ports. But the latency? Um, so you're limited, so internally, if uh, um, the, internally on the, the, um, the Arduino itself, the latency isn't bad, but because you're communicating over a serial port, you know, I set the, the speed higher, 57.6, instead of um, 9600, which is what the default is, because it, the, the timing it takes. But if you saw from the, um, the one video, um, the eyes are moving rapidly. Um, they are tracking points that move around, if you were to wave your hand in front of it. Um, uh, so I, I don't have any measurements for precise latency. Um, there'd be an interesting uh, project to take on. So Peter, could you repeat for us when you're going to be doing the open space? Nine o'clock tonight. Okay, and you're going to have your boards up there. I'll have right? some Arduino boards and some relay packs and we can play around if we want. Great. So if anybody has any more questions for Peter or wants to see this thing in action, please come out tonight to the open spaces, which are the other side of uh, registration. And let's have a big, warm applause for Peter Croft. Thank you.